We're going to start with the markets this morning. David Barnson with me for the hour. China, China's looking to, we think, we believe that China is looking to, uh, in, to expand the ban on iPhones uh, uh, more than just government workers. Apple's taking it on the chin. What do you make of that? I think that if the markets really thought that was happening, it'd probably be a worse impact, but there's a fear there. The thing I want to keep pointing out about this pressure on big tech is when valuations are this high, all it takes is a little bit of a headline, a little bit of news, and you see stocks drop quite a bit. Part of it is just that they're simply overpriced. Well, look, we've got to, they're down 3.7% yeah. all the way back to 176. Our other businesses, American businesses that do business in China, are they threatened? Well, I think on the margin they are, and the, but a lot of it has to do with American pressure for certain companies to move their presence back to America. So it's on both sides. The overall tension between U.S.-China economic relations is a big deal, and it isn't fully priced into markets. Still. Well, China's really slowing down. I got new numbers. Oh, very Their much. exports down 8%, yeah. imports down 7%. Yeah. Is that in any way good for us? Oh, not in any way. It's bad for the whole global economy because they're such a big con contributor to global GDP. It's the property sector. They're having a real estate slowdown, and that takes away so much economic activity. Then what happens next is I believe they're going to start doing all the stimulus, both fiscal and monetary, that Japan did, that the U.S. did, and that makes things worse long term. You're a dividend guy, but yes. give me the big picture for a second. It doesn't look great at the moment, does it? No, this is why I'm a dividend guy, by the way. Yeah way is when you're focused on individual companies growing cash flow, you can afford to be a little less concerned with those macro things that's happening in China. But there is always some bad news out there. Always. Always. And I just think that right now that we need to focus more on what's happening with China and probably less on the Fed and this constant talk about U.S. interest rates. What's that expression? You have to climb the wall of worry. I, I go about 40, 50 years on that one. It's still around, isn't yeah, it? Well, uh, you know, I only have 49 years on planet Earth, and I have 49 years of doing it. We always have to climb a wall, worry, to get things done, but investors in particular need to climb. That is very true. Yeah. All right, right now, I've got the yield on the 10-year Treasury at 4.29%. It's gone up, and I've got the yield on the 2-year Treasury above 5%. That hurts. Uh, let, David, while I've got you here, yeah. explain that to me. When our Treasury yields go up, why is that so bad for big tech stocks? Because their valuations are so high, and so everyone, every investor has a choice. Do you want to buy something with risk or without risk? And if you're going to buy something with no risk and get some good return, that makes big tech less attractive. When uh, treasuries are paying 0%, nobody was very attracted to it. Right now, it's a valuation story. The multiple, what, what the P-E ratio, people call it, that is really too high with treasury rates uh, moving higher. Look at that, six months at 5.5%. Ouch. Yeah. A closer look at Apple now, please. A big drag on the Dow yesterday, a drag on the Dow again today. Tell me more about this. Uh, the Apple iPhone ban may be extended. Bloomberg is reporting that state-owned enterprises, so many businesses in China, might restrict their employees from using the Apple iPhone. So launch. less demand for iPhones. Where am I going wrong? You're, looking, you've got a, you're pulling a face. Um, it, it, I don't believe that they have all the details of what China's looking to do, and I never believe stories that are going to hurt China more than they're going to hurt us. And in this particular case, we're talking about $174 stock, which is where it was two weeks ago. It was in 170s all through May. So it's off with $9 because it's up $9 in the last two weeks. So the market's not reacting in any substantive way. Apple is still an incredibly expensive stock. Oh, you may feel okay, but Apple, for a shareholder, well, I don't own Apple. Too I don't good I'm not bullish on <laughs> what do you Apple care? at all. Right. I, it's not that I don't care. It's that I don't agree that this is going to become a macro story. Okay. All right. Uh, GameStop up after the earnings. No, they're not. Down. Now they're down 5%. Not that long ago, just a couple of hours, they were up. Now they're down 5%. It's known to be a meme stock. I get in trouble when I say that. Well, they lost less money, so that's good and bad news. $2.8 million versus $108 million a year ago. And that'll do it every time. And David, uh, it, now it's your turn. <laughs> well, we want to talk about NVIDIA, Disney, GameStop. And there's just a lot of stories out there. This whole meme stock thing, you know how I feel. You These shiny objects yeah. have to be avoided. They're never going to make money, by the way. Okay. Um, and, I, yeah, I mean, I think that right now with the market, there's a lot of things that are luring people in that are traps, that are not attractive investments. And yeah. people are buying the hype, not a real good story. We'll get to your dividend plays later, okay? Thank I you, promise. Sir. All right. Uh, you're our dividend. And here he gets to play the part of the yeah. dividend guy. First up... You're like American Electric Power. Okay, 
What does it yield? Uh, yields about four and a half percent right now because the utility sector has gotten hit hard. It's the only utility company that we own in the portfolio. Utilities are the worst performing sector on the year. And American Electric Power, we think, is the best run utility company in the country. So uh, the thing was at ninety five dollars. Now you have it at seventy seven. This is where you want to start buying the good utility. American Electric Power, four and a half percent. And I got to always remind you, Stuart, it's not just a good yield to buy. They're going to grow it four, five, six. 7% per year going forward. Oh, I'll take that. Yes, uh, Kenvu. K-E-N-V-U-E. What do they do and what's the yield? Yeah, Kenvu. Who's heard of it, right? No one knows what it is, except for we all do because it was Johnson & Johnson's consumer products company. <laughs> it's Tylenol. It's baby shampoo. It's Neutrogena. It's all these major Band-Aids, right? Huge consumer products. But Johnson Johnson spun it off. It has a higher yield than Johnson & Johnson does with Johnson Johnson's favorite business, consumer products. We love it. Kenvu just started t uh, trading recently as its own ticker. It has a three and a half percent yield. Uh -huh. Not great. Growing every year. All right, all right, all right. I'll all take right. your word. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a judge has granted a temporary restraining order saying a California school district cannot inform parents if a student chooses to change their gender identity. You helped found a Christian school in California. What do you make of this argument here? You know, it's really disappointing that they want to pretend this is about the kids when they still have rules. They have to report when kids are truant. They have to report when kids take headache medicine. Yep. This is so disingenuous. This is about a radicalization and a control. And you either believe that the parents have this ultimate kind of moral responsibility in the home, or you believe the state does. And if you believe the state does, you do radical things like what Rob Bont is doing. But it's, it's very disappointing that pretending it's about child safety, because it obviously is not. Got it. Thank you, David. Let me say thank you very much to David Bonson for being with us for the hour. All good stuff, and thank you very much indeed. Enjoyed it very much. Thank you. And thank you for recommending Blackstone.